Okay, let's do one more because um, what I want you to see with the indirect truth methods is it's not always that easy, right? Um, especially if you have a um, if you have conjunctions, because remember, a conjunction is true under only one case, and it's false in three other possibilities. So let me give you an example here, and we'll kind of work it out. If you want to follow me on the book, I mean, I'm pulling an example right from the book, which is on page 327, right? But I'll just put it up on the board, and then we'll do it, and you can see it, right? Which is, um, here's the first premise, negation A, therefore B, B, therefore A, A, right? Therefore, negation B, whatever it is, right? Uh, conclusion is A and not B, right? So this is our argument, right? Now, in order to do the indirect truth method, we have to assume that the premises are true and the conclusion is false. So let's write this in. I'm going to use a red pin just to symbolize that, which means this has to be true, this has to be true, this has to be true, and this has to be false. Now. Because we have a conjunction, we have to stop and say, because we have to say, wait a second, it's three possible ways in which a conjunction can be false. So I've actually got to write it three times, right? And represent all the possibilities in which the conjunction can be false. And so I'll do the same thing with the truth. We may not actually have to fill out the whole thing. Uh, we'll see. Okay. So, okay. So let's write it out. So again, always start with your conclusion. So the possible ways for A to be false is if this is true and this is false, if this is false and this is true, or both of them are false, right? Because remember, the conjunction rule is that both terms have to be true, right? So now, remember, so this is a negation. We want to fill in our B, which is true, false, true, right? Okay, so we've got that in, but now we just need to fill in our Bs everywhere else. And it's easy here because we can actually kind of use both of them. We have false, true, true, false, false, true. We have true, false, true, true, false, true. Now let's fill in our A's. Right, so we've got an A, which our A's are true, false, false, true, false, false, true, false, false. Right, and then we have true, false, false. We have a negation here, which is false, true, true. Okay, so actually I just filled in the whole thing for you. But now we've got to look at it. Remember, the rule is that we can find at least one case in which it's logical that all of this works out, um, then that means it's invalid. If, if it, we, we discover contradictions as we go in each line, then it's not. So let's start with the first row, right? And let's look at the main operators, right? So first off, in order for... Uh, well, yeah, yeah, let's start with this one, right? So in order for this to be true, this is false and this is true, that works, right? This is logical, this first premise, right? Uh, well, let's start with this first premise right here. Well, let's do it. And then over here, if both of these are true, then it's logical, right? That could actually be true, right? Let's look at this one. If this is true and this is false, eh, this cannot be true, right? Because we have a conditional, and the rule for the conditional again is that the antecedent, if the antecedent is true and the consequence is false, then it's false. It's this case, right? So, eh, so this first line does not work. Cross that off, right? Let's move to our second line. Okay, so remember we're conjoining this. And this is true and this is false. This can't be true. It has to be false. So circle that, and the second line is false, right? So let's look at the third line. So it looks like we may have a, a valid argument on our hands. Let's see if this works out. So this is true. So we're looking at this and this. If this is true and this is true, this could be true, yeah? If this is true and this is false, this cannot be true, right? And, right? So we cover all the cases, which means this is a valid argument. Right? Valid. Because any of these three lines we can't actually prove, right? We come up with three different places in which we actually broke our operator rules in order to say that. So if you break the rules, then it's false, right? So in this case, we have a valid argument, okay? So this is, so the reason, this is, most of them aren't like this, but 
I mean, in many cases, you don't have to do all three rows. You can just kind of run through a row, and if you can find them, then you'll, you'll work it out. Um, but you kind of, especially if you have a conjunction in the conclusion, you kind of have to do them. Um, but you'll see as you go, but I wanted to show you the tougher one, but still, this is a lot better. I mean, here we only have A and B, so we could have done a truth table probably really easily. Um, but we've proven it by doing at least one less row, right? Okay. So I hope that makes sense. So what you should do now is kind of read the chapter and also you'll see at the end of this chapter, there's also discussion on how you, on how you can classify and compare argument statements. So I'll let you read that. Uh, that's not really too much of the focus of the course, so um, I'm not really concerned about that section, but definitely read that section. Okay, uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Okay, email me your questions too, bye.